And tomorrow for Errol's graduation, we're gonna have a chocolate fountain, just like this. Stephanie's gonna have chocolate. Yeah. Holy macaroni and cheese, this is a lot of chocolate. You know, this seems like such a good idea at one point, and then uh, as you get closer to it in the chaos of trying to get a whole family together, it's like, <laughs> my anxiety's up. <laughs> what it means to be an American is freedom. I don't believe the American dream. I think it is hard to be an Asian in America today. Your Fellow Americans is a project asking questions about race, immigration, and the American dream. We're just trying to figure out what it means to be American for as many different folks as possible. My name is Ariel Estelle Bernice Pass. I am 18 years old right now. I've been a cheerleader for seven years of my life. Did ballet and jazz and tap before then. Pretty big into football and sports. Um, but obviously I am an African American girl and that's my life. Ariel Ripas grew up in Overland Park, a Kansas City suburb with her parents, Kyle and Gina, and her two brothers. Just a week before her high school graduation, we joined Ariel, her mom, and her grandma Jonas at the dinner table to hear what they thought about race, immigration, and the American dream. For people me, my age, really, it's an ignorance of the issues or a lack of wanting to. Why do you think that it? is? Why do you think there's ignorance in people your age? <laughs> it's, I think it has to do with the sharing of everything and let's all love each other. And we're going very much going back to this ideology of. Everything is accepted, even being intolerant of others. I am a biracial person with a black mom and a white dad. That is a very different experience than a biracial person with a white mom and a black dad. Honestly, for me, because I had the black female influence, I was more raised and inclined toward be a strong black African-American woman. You don't need to recognize that other side, but as I've gotten older, it's kind of create an identity crisis really where I'm starting to wonder, am I just this strong side or is there something else entirely to this? But really, in my life, because my skin is darker than paper, <laughs> really, I'm mostly identified by the outside world as someone who's African American. I always have to think about it. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's like not to think about it. Oh, you, you, no, no. <laughs> no, that was a great no, look. No, 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 because the look on your face was like, do you, do you think about it or do you not? I don't think I ever truly forget when I'm around my friends that I'm black. I think it's easier for me to forget or to get comfortable, mm -hmm. but then there's always something to remind you that you go, oh, yep, that's, that's right. There becomes a comfortability where I'm with my friends and I'm joking and I'm like, oh, let's do makeup, but then they go to put on foundation and it's like, oh, that's definitely not gonna fit my color. Is it frustrating? Yes, it can be very frustrating in that sometimes I don't feel like I fit in really either race. Me and my brothers are, we're all biracial, but telling my brother, my older brother, that he is biracial, you wouldn't be able to. My younger brother can't be picked up by my mom sometimes because people don't believe that he belongs to her. So it really does cause you to have to roll with the punches and to not be so set in the ground that you can't be moved. I am. As I get older, I, I have less of a filter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want her to have to hear that junk. Okay, well, but you can afford it. I mean, I still have to live and go to oh, school. I, I, I mean, I, this, yeah. I, I still have I, decades I, ahead of and myself. I do, <laughs> I do think about that and I do temper the conversation but I, it bothers me to not address it. Do I believe that I get stereotyped or profiled? Yes, there's a little bit of that. My whole schooling, I've either been the only black child in the classroom or one of four at the most. And really, it causes me to carry the cross and burden of an entire race when really, as a first grader, I didn't even understand. I just thought we were all people. You know, and from a young age, that instills that, oh, you're different. This is the way it is. I'm better than you, or the way because you're that way, you can't have the things that I can have. Not, this was dinner conversation my whole <laughs> growing up, followed by there. These white people are not going to give you anything. You have to be smarter. Mm -hmm. You have to jump higher. Do you remember this? Because I do. Absolutely, and you I have to run faster. Still believe it. But it's kind of an unspoken thing you've taught me, though. 
Really? Really. There's definitely two paths. When you're the minority students, you can live into all of the stereotypes or you can completely, as the word they like to use, assimilate. And definitely I have to be smarter. I have to be one of the smartest kids in the class in order to gain respect from my peers. No, I can't act out. No, I can't be the loudest person. I have to be the best I can. Overcome your expectations, but don't scare people. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm just a person. I'm not this statue for my entire race or for my entire generation. I don't live into the stereotypes because they don't define me. I live into the things that make me happy, into the things that fill my life with joy and really allow my spirit to be happy.